Hey everybody, great to have you back here in the fish tank. Now, it's time for the latest Mini Masters update. Not only is it a new patch, new season, it's a brand new expansion. Let's find out what's going to be in it. Right, so the new expansion is called Frostbite. We've seen Nazira, the new card here, has been... Uh, we've seen it in the news for a while. If you got involved in the PTR, you will have seen her there. Uh, but let's see... Uh, what's in this patch and find out more about her and uh, the other new card. So, the new expansion is going to be called Frostbite. 2.3 is the version. This is dropping Thursday the 11th of April. There's going to be a new DLC, a free DLC as always with a new expansion. Remember you get an expansion every three months here in Mini Masters Land. Now the DLC is not going to be free straight away. There's going to be some kind of Steam uh, promotion and that's going to be on the 17th onwards normally it's available for a month this is going to be an accursed themed dlc uh, it's going to include things like near the fallen and the Frostbearer. as always we're going to have a new season pass we're going to have new cards new cosmetics balance changes a bunch of bug, bug fixes and improvements and as always new tournaments let's find out about the new cards so as mentioned the first one is nazara the cold countess Let's have a look at her. Right. So she's, she's a six mana accursed minion. Melee minion. Single target. Only hits ground. She does 70 damage every second. 70 DPS. That's a decent amount of damage. 400 health. So not particularly tanky. But she does come with some additional keywords. And we've got a brand new keyword in Vampiric. That both of the new cards of the expansion have. So this means when they kill something, they will heal for 20% of the killed enemy's max health up to a maximum of 100 health per attack. So they don't heal on every attack. They only heal when they kill something with their attack. Now, it's quite straightforward with her since she's a single target uh, minion. But it'd be interesting to see as we look at the other card how this vampiric might affect cards that can do multiple attacks and things like that. Okay, so she also has true damage, which means her attacks ignore protection. Now that's specifically, as we see in a minute with her Frost Nova, that's specifically so she can ignore Frozen. And we might see a change at some point from going from full true damage to just ignores Frozen. Kind of makes more sense, but that's uh, she's going to have true damage to start with. Uh, and she comes with an ability, which is the Frost Nova ability. So she freezes everything around her in a decent area. Now, as with all ability cards, it gets more expensive each time you use it. This ability, the Frost Nova, costs two mana to start with. Next time you use it, it's three, and so on and so forth. But of course, as she has true damage, she'll still be able to do her maximum 70 FPS to any frozen minions. Okay, so that's Nazara the Cold Countess. The second new card is the Frost Fang Familiar. This is a super cute little guy. This is basically a good version of the Haunting Hugger. And I'll explain what I mean by that, where the Haunting Hugger will find enemies and curse them, be bad for enemies, whereas the Frostfang Familiar will find friendly minions and will buff them. So, three mana. Ignore the damage amount on there, that's just a mistake on this version of the card. Doesn't do any damage. 75 health. So what this will do is when you spawn it, it will look for a close by friendly minion. If it finds one, it will haunt it. Now remember, friendly means it can be either yours or your teammates in 2v2s. So if it finds a friendly minion, it will haunt it. And what that means is it will give that minion vampiric. And it will also cast a frost nova as the haunt happens. And with just with the haunting hugger, when it dies, it carries on and finds another target. This will do the same. It will come out of the dead minion and it will look for another friendly minion to grab. And if it doesn't, then it will just go towards the master tower. If it gets to the master tower and gets its hug off, its haunt off, whatever you want to call it, it will stun the master for five seconds and it will also trigger the frost nova around the master. So reminder, uh, this will give vampiric to another minion that it hugs. And of course that vampiric, as we saw earlier, will heal for 20% of the killed enemies max HP up to a maximum of 100 health per attack. So be interesting to see how this works with things like a Colossus. If it kills a ton of stuff with a big swing, 
then he can get some big heals. Then also Fergus, what's an attack? Is it each part of his damage or constant? Is it all his entire attack? I don't know, but it'd be interesting to see this card and see uh, what people manage to get from it. Uh, and it also, as mentioned, it has the Frost Nova. So the Frost Nova is the same as Nazara, but instead of it being ability, this just triggers one time every time it haunts something. So it can trigger multiple Frost Novas if it does haunt multiple minions. Right, so those are the two new cards. They will, as always, be available in both uh, versions of the Season Pass, whether it's the free version or the Ruby version. Where you'll get them earlier and now we look at the new cosmetics so the new cosmetics these will be primarily available in the ruby season pass now instead of getting a new skin for a master we're getting a new skin for an arena now we haven't had a new arena for a while i think the last one was the forced uh, arena the showdown one this is the new one called the chapel of light which is the seat of power for the imperium and their holy army the brothers of light so, always nice to get some new arenas, and uh, nice to see this. One thing I was a little bit disappointed in last season is there was a cool new Volko skin. I don't think I saw a single person use it. Uh, maybe that's just not many people playing Volko. So, alongside the new arena, we get, the, as always, the avatars for the new cards. This is an animated avatar for Nazara and a basic avatar for the Frostfang Familiar. And of course, we get a new emote. This is the XOXO, cute little Nazara there. Right, so that's the new stuff. Let's have a look at the balances. Now, if you've been following along with my videos, you will have known that uh, we looked at the PTR recently, which were the proposed changes. So what you'll see with these changes is some of those proposed changes made it in, some of those didn't, some of them got changed. So let's find out what is getting buffed nerfed and or rebalanced right first off bats 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 duration goes up from five seconds to six seconds so basically you could just trigger more bats with it and the longer you go into the game the faster the mana gets the more benefit you can get from that blast monster detonate damage so remember when the blast monster is attacking something when it dies it triggers that detonate around it and that damage is going up from 25 to 35 so that kills a few more things uh, from one single detonate charge so for example it can now kill blood imps swarmers and slitherbound and then again you get more and more as you go on because you... remember the way it works is it can trigger lots of these detonates if there's a lot of things dying right next up we see a buff to one of the newest cards the crossbow clubhouse so health going up a little bit. So remember the way this works is it's a building with a ranged attack because it's got the crossbow dudes inside. And then when the building dies or decays, then the crossbow dudes are spawned. So health going up from 150 to 200 and the attack cooldown going down. So uh, just a higher DPS uh, kind of now makes sense. It's kind of a third of the cooldown of a crossbow dude. There's three crossbow dudes kind of makes sense. I would like to see this... Um, get extra range it's a building with units up in it getting more range kind of makes sense so if it still needs a buff then maybe we'll look at that at some time in the future right next up demon warrior damage going up from 90 to 100 and of course remember that means that the damage will be doubled from the fourth time onwards so that double damage is going up from 180 to 200 so a few little things that that can change now can kill a flightless dragon whelp in one hit, whereas previously it couldn't. And um, also, once you get to the fourth time, once she's big, she can now single shot a succubus, which previously she couldn't. And that would be quite a powerful interaction because, of course, the succubus would take the damage, would jump back, would get a lot of damage out. So that's a, a, a very sort of niche but specific situation where this small change will change um, a, a lot. Right, next up we see a change to Feng the Wanderer. So remember, Feng gets buffed based on the faction of the cards in your hand. And the faction, the positive effect buff that he gets from having an Empyrean card in your hand when played is changing from Taunt to the new Bulwark, which is um, the, the new keyword that came in last season. 
with Rystar. Now, this is definitely a good change for Feng because the taunt was often just irrelevant. He was often on his own anyway. The taunt didn't really help him. Bulwark means 50% reduced damage from ranged minions. So in certain situations where he's against ranged minions, he effectively has double the, uh, the health since they're doing half the damage. So he'll be very, very good in, in those specific situations. So could be a good buff there for Feng. Could definitely see more of him. Right, when will the Ghast buffs end? We see lots of buffs for Ghast over and over. He's getting another one. Attack cooldown going from 2.6 seconds to 2.3 seconds. That doesn't affect how often he can revive things. That's as we see there on the card, 2.1 seconds. That's a separate cooldown. But this means that his attacks are going to be quicker. He's going to do more damage. So, I mean, I've seen a few situations where he can be quite good. He's definitely a lot, lot better than he was when he was launched. Not so terrible anymore. Okay, a cast delay reduction for healing fireball. So if you've just been missing your heals, this might be good for you. So it's going to take one second instead of 1.5 seconds uh, between casting the spell and it landing. Of course, there is also another 0.5 seconds cast delay in there that everything has. But that's kind of uh, seen as invisible. Next up, we see a buff to the healing shrine. So this is buffing the health of the unit, so it won't last any longer won't heal anymore, but the actual unit, the actual building itself will be a little bit more resilient to damage. So it won't just get cleared out by a Daggerfall like it previously would, for example. So a little buff there. Now we see a buff to the Mountain Gale. So Mountain Gale is the spell that slows everything, uh, speeds up your stuff and heals your stuff. Also triggers Revelry. Duration is going up from 5 seconds to 6 seconds. The overall healing is still 150 though. So the healing per second goes down from 30 to 25, which could be problematic in some situations. Sometimes you just have enough healing to keep something alive. In those situations, you might not get that anymore. Um, so basically, the, the, the increased duration helps because the slow and the speed up lasts for longer. Right, change to Mountain Shaper. I mean, we could argue this is a rebalance, but mana going down from 8 to 7 is pretty substantial. Damage per charge going down from 80 to 75 is not really earth-shattering, if you excuse the pun. So, remember the damage per charge, you can have up to 10 charges, so 800 down to 750 maximum damage. Mana, as I said, down from 8 to 7. Are people going to start using this more? I don't know. This is... I feel like from my previous meta video, this was used like once it, uh, in all modes just over the entire season from the leaderboard data. So it was really struggling. It's never recovered from being squished down to only being sort of a bridge wide. Will this change that? Who knows? Right, Priestess getting some increased range. So remember, she does a heal if there's anything damaged friendly in range or she attacks. So this increased range can help her with her DPS. Uh, well, it's not going to increase her DPS, but it will help her get her, her damage out. But it also help her heal from further away as well. Right. Resonating Construct. Damage going up from 100 to 120. So this is the damage for his punch. And remember that punch has a small AoE. Not really going to change much. Nothing really dies at 120 damage that didn't already die at 100. Uh, I don't think so. Not too much change in there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a Blast Crystal nerf at some point because it is really damn strong out there. Right, Shadow Whelp. Damage going up from 50 to 60. This is quite interesting because normally things like the Whelp, Shadow Whelp, all the Whelps were tied together in regards to their DPS, their stats, like everything, their health, etc. Whereas this is getting moved away from that. So this is... Uh, getting a slight buff where all the other units are not. Now remember the stealth, when it comes out of stealth, it does triple damage. So small buff to regular damage, actually quite a decent buff to the triple damage. So now it's damage coming out of stealth will go up from 150 to 180, which means it can suddenly start killing a lot more instantly than it previously could. So now can insta-kill monsters like the Blast Monster, Spirit Monster, Veil Stalker, High Mage Leilau, Soul Stealer, and Boom Buggy uh, instantly 
that it couldn't do previously. So, and one thing I've noticed is a lot of the bot decks use the Shadow Well. Read into that what you will. Right, next up, a buff to the Shroom Armor Shumi. Damage buff going up from 70 to 80. As long as it's not a health buff, I don't mind it, really. It gets out of control when it has a lot of health. But, um, so a small buff there to Shroom Armor. Spirit Infusion. Not really sure if this is necessary or not. So the duration is going up from 6 seconds to 8 seconds, but it gives an extra spirit. So it still gives you one spirit every two seconds. It's just over eight seconds. You get four spirits instead of three. Still has the Accursed Ascension to give two extra spirits. Spirits, I think, are pretty strong. Remember, spirits recently got buffed, so the lower end of the spirit is a minimum extra 100 health. So this could be pretty strong out there. Uh, also remember, it is it uh, gives spirits to friendly random, uh, random friendly minions. Uh, which again means you or your teammates' minions in 2v2s. Okay, next up, a buff to Stormy. Attack cooldown going down from 3.5 seconds to 3 seconds, so it attacks more quickly, gets its damage off more quickly, its DPS goes up. Now, on paper, that seems like a good thing. The thing with Stormy, because it does its self-damage, it means it's going to be damaging itself more quickly, which means it's harder to heal it and keep it alive. So this could be kind of a double-edged sword for, for the Stormy. If you're using Stormy on your own, this is clearly good. If you're trying to heal it and keep it alive, it might not be quite as good as you think. Right, Ting Tang Tung gets a health increase from 270 to 300. Um, don't hate that at all. Um, and also that changes the thresholds of when the brothers fall off. So you could look at specific situations and uh, this small change here could really change the way that it interacts with with certain minions so there you're going to lose a brother at uh, every hundred instead of every 90 so that could change a few things there next up we see a buff to the troubadour straight health increase from 1400 to 1500 not really too bothered about that to be honest right next up we have a rebalance so quite a big change here to rage in reinforcements so Previously, it was a 4 mana spell that would give you some um, crossbow dudes, shielded crossbow dudes, I think, um, a raged whelp, uh, or warrior, maybe? Uh, but now it's going up to 7 mana, and it would give you either one brother of light, two warriors, or six spear throwers, all with rage. So... It's going up to be more expensive, but the units, of course, that you get from it are being much more impactful. Not entirely sure what the the reasoning behind this change is. Don't hate it, but you're just going to see it in different kind of decks. Uh, and just for clarification, the Brother of Light you get is half of the Brothers of Light. It's not the Shield Guard of Light. It's not the Brother of the Burning Fist. It's just the regular Brother of Light. Right, next up we have nerfs, things that are getting weaker. So, King Puff's pretty strong out there. He's having an, an attack damage reduction from 75 to 60. Uh, not changing his attack rate at all. That was something that was proposed in the PTR but didn't go through. So, I mean, this is, it, on paper it doesn't look quite so impactful, but he's definitely going to especially against lots of mid-range units, he's going to require an extra attack to kill them. So things like Legionnaires, Assassins, Annihilator, he's now going to take three attacks to kill those instead of two. So of course that's going to mean those units are lasting longer, they're putting out a lot more tower damage in that situation. So this is definitely a nerf for King Puff, uh, but of course it doesn't touch the, the things that make King Puff particularly strong with his gifts and his bridge switches and his, his knights, for example. Okay, small nerf to the Blood Imps. The attack cooldown's going up by 0.1 of a second, so they attack slower. Their DPS goes down a little bit. Kabatos has been getting a lot of slams recently. Gets another one. Mana goes up from 6 to 7. So now we both, I think we we have Fergus at 7 mana and the Kabatos are at 7 mana. Does it make sense for them both to exist? Who knows? Uh, but Kabatos gets another in the, a long line of nerfs. 
corpse explosion. This is a pretty common, highly played spell, especially in a cursed decks. We've seen a lot of those. Damage going down from 100 to 80. So that does actually, that's quite a substantial nerf because this will no longer kill things that it did previously. Things like Zeppelin Bombers, Spear Throwers, Chisma Boomstick, Razor Squadron, Ghost, Dragon Whelp, etc. A lot of stuff that won't die to a single Corpse Explosion anymore. And of course, Corpse Explosion also does face damage. So this is going to be less face damage as well if you have those corpses on face. So I think that's quite a big nerf to Corpse Explosion there. Right, High Marshal Rystar. One of the cards that were added in the last patch. He's getting a small nerf to his AoE. So the width of his AoE is being reduced a little bit. And the, the placement of it is being adjusted a little bit as well. So he's not... I haven't really tested it, but he should be less effective at killing stuff all around his feet. We'll see how that works out. Um, and this might also affect how well he can kill things in the pocket as well when he's attacking um, the tower. So a small reduction there in Rystar's AoE. Next up, a nerf to Howling Moon, simply increasing the mana from 8 to 9. I mean, it's still a card that can get you massive value. 9 mana for 2 werewolves, and especially in 2v2s, if you reduce the health of a bunch of stuff to 50%, that's massive value. Uh, but of course, you've got the other side of it where sometimes you're forced to play it without having anything to reduce, so you just get those 2 werewolves. I mean, werewolves are pretty good, but 2 werewolves just for 9 mana in that situation is not great. Next up we have a nerf for Jing. So the shocking re-entry damage going down from 40 to 25, so that matches his regular attack. I don't hate that, but I feel like it doesn't address the core of why Jin Long is so powerful. Definitely going to reduce the strength of it. Definitely not going to trade as well. But it means that it won't be able to singly kill things like Crystal Archers, Swarmers, Nether Bats, with a single shocking re-entry. Um, so that can change things a little bit. But it's still not going to change those situations where you have it over a near veer or something like that. Where you can just perma stun it if you've got the spells to cycle. Next up we have a nerf to the Snake Druid. So immobilized duration going down from 5 seconds to 2 seconds. And basically what that means is he'll still be able to perma immobilize since his attack speed is 2 seconds. But once he dies, the unit that he was attacking is going to be free after 2 seconds instead of the 5 seconds. So I feel like this is a fair change. He has seen quite a lot of nerfs recently though, so... Um, I don't know if it's fair or not. It's just been the meta has really suited him. Um... But he has been one of the highest played Legendaries cards, I think, from my meta videos. Right, next up, Storm Tamer. Last season was a bit of a wash because of the Storm Tamer bug. We know the devs should have fixed it far sooner than they have. Of course, it's going to be fixed in this patch. Unfortunately, it didn't get fixed because of vacations and stuff like that. So it's been a very problematic season. Storm Tamer getting a health nerf. I think this is just like a bit of a slap on the wrist for just ruining... A whole season. Now, interestingly, I looked at my data from my meta analysis, from my leaderboard analysis, and his play rate from last season to this season has gone up almost 24 times. Is that based off the fact he got a small buff in the last patch? Or is it because people are shitty and are just playing it because he's bugged? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so those are the balances. Next up, we have a lot of fixes and improvements, which is always good to see. This is one of my favorite parts of the patches. And the devs have been getting a lot of hate about not fixing stuff and improving stuff. We've got loads of fixes here. So if you're thinking that, you may want to think again. Right, let's have a look. Gameplay fixes. Storm Tamer breaking units. Fixed. Thank God. Fixed Korgoth the Tyrant. Uh, Occasionally being invisible in matches. That seemed to mostly affect Xbox. Suggestions that it was also on PC. That should now be fixed. Stop the Incubus from treating Master uh, Attacks as range. Thereby triggering him to jump to the Master Tower. That shouldn't happen anymore. Leilal's Adventure Master Perk 1 now triggers correctly. That I'm not sure exactly what that was. But that was something to do with the new um, Resonating Blast Crystals. Just constantly triggering over and over again. 
pinging has now been enabled in the streamer UI. Thank you. So that means you can give yourself your teammates a thumbs up or a thumbs down or whatever. But communication is back if you're using the streamer UI for me. And for a lot of people, that's going to be a huge fix. Fix the Slitherbound spawn location. I think that was just the, the hologram showing they're not being in the right place when you were playing them. Fix the Prowler and Musketeer occasionally entering a permanently accelerated state. Fix Stormbringer's perk to visually only giving teammates units marksmanship. Fix Jezra the Void Mother getting replaced by her ability card. Next up we have Fixed Unholy Ground occasionally not releasing rooted units. Fixed Storm Tamer being played near a unit with Revelry not triggering Revelry. Fixed Cheese Date acquired from future past or present spawning unintended units. Fixed Kernaf Crystalback's ability occasionally failing to trigger properly. Updated the description of several cards to ind correctly indicate they're targeting ground only. No idea which ones those are. Right. Next up, we have some fixes and improvements to the user interface, the user experience and visuals. Added a toggle to the collection menu to show less cards. So remember, if you remember from 1.0, there was the two versions, right? You could look at the cards that showed you like eight cards on the screen or the collection view that showed you a hundred or something. So that kind of thing is back now. So previously in 2.0, we had the lots of cards on the screen. This is a toggle to show you fewer cards on the screen. And that's useful if you're sitting back and looking at a TV across the room or something like that. Or if you're new to the game and you're not, you don't really recognize a lot of the cards when they're small. So that's a good change. Added an unready button to lobbies. Nice. Added a button to block emotes. Nicola's going to be unhappy, but a lot of people will be happy. Limited the red dot notification on the cards tab to no longer appear for unclaimed rewards in the collection, only for new cards. I like that. The little red dot can be annoying. Some people get super triggered by that. You know, we've had bugs in the past where the dot f would stay around somewhere on the UI and people lost their mind. Right, carrying on. Fixed various emotes not showing up correctly in the customization menu. Fixed unholy ground emote not rendering correctly. Fixed various avatars not showing up correctly in the customization menu. Made mouse over tooltips appear quicker, making everything more snappy. Fixed mouse over tooltips on cards in the post-match summary. And leaderboard screen not working. That's great, especially for newer players. If you're, you're looking, what did my opponent play? You bring up their deck after the, the match by clicking on players. And now you can mouse over and it will tell you what the cards are. Improved feedback on several UI elements when hovering them. Fixed platform specific description on an achievement that was unclear. Fixed the problem where getting directed to the Ruby purchase menu from the special offers page could cause a flow break interrupting purchases. Made several more master skins available for purchase in the customization menu. If you're looking to buy menu uh, master skins, check them out. They tend to be master skins that were unavailable previously because they were in a battle pass. And then they kind of wait a few months before they release them. So check out that if you're looking to buy some new skins. Fix the game showing up without a proper image in the Steam downloads view, as well as other several places in the Steam interface. Good, good. Right, made claiming quest and achievement rewards. Skip the chest opening step, making the process faster. Fix the high five and stout heart cheers emote not animating correctly. I'm excited to try that. So the high five emote, if you and your teammate both use it at the same time, they should do a little high five. The stout heart cheers emote may be the same thing, but I don't think that ever worked. So I'll be interested to see that. Applied the correct skybox to the Tranquil Estate Arena. Updated the main screen quest widget to more clearly show quests completed. Fixed how shadows are rendered at higher quality settings for specific rendering pipelines. Guild banners set in guild settings should now be the ones shown on the leaderboards. That affected my guild for some reason. Very strange, but hopefully should be fixed. Accepting a lobby invite now cancels any ongoing matchmaking queue. Lobbies now permit players using the same master if they're in different teams. So I think that was... Um, hmm. I think that was only in 2v2 four-player lobbies. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
Avatars now layered below the avatar frames, clearing up pixelated edges. Made Caesar, Caesar be less verbose for higher level players. That's like the announcer talking. Not really sure why that would be for only higher level players, but um, that's just what it says. Claiming rewards from the season pass now shows those rewards name and rarity correctly. URLs in guild descriptions will no longer be censored. However, the descriptions will have to be reset for this to take effect. Rescaled the purple power mech suit Volco to match the size of the other skins. Right now we have some performance stability and system fixes and improvements. Okay, so behind the scenes, the application name is going to be Minion Space Masters as opposed to Minion Masters without a space. A little bit of history. Originally, 1.0 was Minion Space Masters, and then it was changed to Minion Masters with no space, and now they're going back. I don't know why that change happened. Doesn't really change anything for the end user, but it's more behind the scenes. Um, so basically what that means is in the app folder, app data folder on your computer, currently it's looking in the Minion Masters no space folder. This patch will make it look in the Minion Space Masters folder. So you might lose some settings and stuff um, as that happens, uh, but only a few graphic settings. You shouldn't really notice it at all and you can easily set those back. So that's kind of a behind the scenes things. You generally don't need to worry about that. Fix an issue in the purchase flow on Xbox that was causing Ruby purchases to get stuck indefinitely. This should potentially, if you've purchased Xbox Rubies, Rubies on Xbox, and somebody messaged me on YouTube the other day, or today I think about this, hopefully this will fix the issue and your Rubies that you didn't receive should appear. If they don't, then reach out and uh, ask for support at support at uh, betadwarf.com. Right. Several errors that would previously force the player to quit the game will now reconnect them instead. Fix disconnecting from Profile Surfer during a match, also forcing you to leave the match despite still being connected to the game server. Um, so this is kind of when you got disconnected, but you could still see the match going on behind the disconnect um, message. This was actually fixed previously. So this is just kind of in the patch notes just for completion's sake. Um, so that should have already been fixed, but if you still have that problem, let the devs know. Improve the speed of the obscenity filters on guild player lists, making things less torturously slow. And fixed an issue where losing connection several times in the game session could adversely affect the stability of the game. Right, some good fixes and improvements there. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Have been things been fixed that you wanted to be fixed? Or is the stuff outstanding that is still missing? Okay, next up, let's just have a quick look at the upcoming tournaments. As always, we have our single day event, Knight's Duel number 34, $400 prize pool. That's on Saturday, the 20th of April. And we have my Fishbowl Brawl, 1v1 and 2v2, play over time events, 21,000 Ruby prize pool starts on the 18th of April. One thing I will say for those, please join them. We haven't had a 2v2 event for ages because there's just not many people that want to get involved in it. So be great to have you in those events, whether it's the single event or the play over time events. I'll put, as always, links in the description. Hit me up if you've got any questions or whatever. Always there to, to help you. Okay, so that's it. Frostbite 2.3. Dropping Thursday the 11th of April. Free DLC coming a week later. We've got a new season pass. We've got the two new cards, which are uh, Nazara the Cold Countess and Frostfang Familiar. Of course, we've got the new cosmetics, including the new arena look forward to seeing that bunch of balance changes lots of awesome bug fixes and improvements and of course the new tournaments Whew, we got through it so that's everything for the upcoming patch i can't wait to get my hands on it i look forward to seeing you guys there as always let me know in the um the, uh, the comments that's the one what do you think about this patch on paper and of course then we'll have a look at it uh, actually Get our hands on it. Look forward to that. If you're new here to the fish tank, make sure, make sure you... Uh, I'll stop. Speak. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Uh, trying to keep you up to date with anything Media Masters related. My name's Bad as a Fish, and I'll see you on the battleground soon.